Question 6 from the 2017 Higher Physics Examination from the SQA, taken from Section 2. The visible spectrum of light emitted by a star is observed to contain a number of dark lines. The dark lines occur because certain wavelengths of light are absorbed when light passes through atoms in the star's outer atmosphere. And there's a quick recall of the absorption spectrum. And those dark lines are caused by the following idea. You maybe have a group of photons uh, coming in and the gas will absorb uh, photons of a certain frequency. So as the photons of light pass through the gas, you can see the blue ones absorbed and the red ones are not absorbed. And because you've reduced the number of photons at that particular frequency, you will have reduced the light at that particular frequency, the amount of light passing through uh, the gas. If you get those black lines on the absorption spectrum, you'll get a reduction of photons passing through. Now, for one mark, it says, for the energy levels shown in the diagram, identify the electron transition that would lead to the absorption of a photon with the highest frequency. Well, we go to our relationship sheet, we can see that the energy of the photon E is equal to HF, H being Planck's constant. And therefore what that means is that we can say that the energy of the photon is directly proportional to the frequency. Which means that the bigger the frequency of the photon, the more energy it's got. So what transition here will give rise to absorption with the highest frequency? Well, it must be a photon with the highest energy. And what that will be is the highest energy gap. So if you're an electron sitting here, and along comes a photon with the biggest amount of energy, that will give rise to the absorption of a photon with the highest frequency. Because only if your frequency is high enough will your energy be high enough. So the transition needed for that has got to be from energy level E0 all the way up to energy level E3. That is the biggest energy gap, and that is the biggest energy energy gap which a photon will have in order to lift that electron up to energy E3. So the answer for one mark is quite simply look for the biggest energy gap transition and that's from E0 to E3 which will give rise to the bigger frequency because energy of the photon is directly proportional to the frequency. Question 6b. An electron makes the transition from energy level E1 to E3 determine the frequency of the photon absorbed. Let's look at our diagram. We've got an electron sitting at energy level E1 and it's going to be uh, promoted to energy level E3 by absorbing the energy of a photon. And that photon must have exact same energy as the energy difference between those two energy levels E3 and E1. So we begin with our equation, and our equation is energy of the photon E equals HF, the famous equation one. We have to rearrange that to get the frequency of the photon, and that's going to equal to E over H. And remember, the energy of the photon is going to equal to the energy difference, delta E, between those two energy levels. Now to do that, all we have to do is just take the big number and take away the small number, that's the rule of thumb, because we don't have to worry about the minus signs, because remember, the minus signs tell us the energy needed by the electron in order to escape the atom. So that's all that minus sign means, it's just a convention. So when we're working out the energy difference, delta E, all we have to do is take the big energy level number, 5.42, times 10 to the power of minus 19, and subtract the smaller energy level where it reaches 1.36 times 10 to the minus 19. And that's going to be in joules, remember. So we do that in our calculator. We end up with an energy gap of 4.06 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So that will be the energy of the photon, 4.06 times 10 to minus 19 joules. And that will be the energy of the photon needed to promote the electron from E1 to E3. So finally we've got to work out what Planck's constant is, so we can quickly look at Planck's constant here. And we can see that Planck's constant H is going to be equal to 6.63. I'll put H down here for you. H is Planck's constant. It's going to be 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 
joule seconds. That is Planck's constant. So back to the equation again. The frequency of the photon is going to equal to E divided by H. So we have got the energy level now. So frequency is going to equal to energy level 4.06. Energy difference, sorry. Times 10 to minus 19 joules. And we're going to divide that by the Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 to minus 34 joule seconds. So the frequency, if we do that in our calculator, is going to come up to be 6.12 times 10, and it's going to be to power 14. And the units for frequencies hertz, which you can see joule, cancel out with the joule, you're left with a second to minus 1, which is really equal to the hertz. So there's the frequency of the photon needed to promote that electron from E1 to E3.